Dual Universe has finally added tons of custom key bindings, which includes enabling joysticks, controllers, and yes, OTOS. We're going to cover all of that, how to set it up, some bonus tips, plus several of the popular HUDs out there have already added support, such as my very own Albatross HUD. So yeah, let's get into it. Right off the bat, I want to say that flying with a HOTAS is pretty fun. I've also tried flying with an Xbox controller a little bit, and that's all right. But a HOTAS is a different experience, especially if you've got a cockpit that is designed to be flown in first person view. If you've already got the setup and perhaps like some really fast like XS or smaller medium core ships that you can fly around, I really do recommend give it a try. It is fun. But getting into the setup, the first important note here is that controllers and joysticks are using a special key binding to work in the game, which means that you do need a player made HUD, such as Albatross or Arc HUD. The default navigation does not load these bindings. The next thing that you need to know is that your seat will need to be in keyboard mode. So to access that, right click on your uh, flying seat, go over to advanced, and change control scheme, make sure that is on keyboard. This is not a strict requirement, but more of like a strong suggestion. The other two modes here, such as virtual joystick and direct, direct control, these are not actual direct binding modes that work with a controller or a joystick. These are still fake modes. And that is why I typically recommend with this, I would say just stick to the keyboard mode. That also means that with your HUD, you can either use your controller or joystick, and then you can still use your keyboard as a backup. All right, now let's actually talk about the configuration, the actual settings. Go ahead and hit escape, go over to your control settings. And if you haven't been in here since the recent updates, there's a new key bindings section that is split up across different types of key bindings because they've added a lot. <laughs> they have really greatly expanded the amount of key binding options you have for things like just general menus, moving your avatar, uh, and then piloting, navigation, build mode tools, precision mode tools. And the one that most affects what we're talking about today, which is this Lua tab. Now you might be thinking that sounds like that's what piloting should be. But the difference between these two is that everything that's in this piloting configuration Things like pitch up, pitch down, yaw, roll, strafing, speed up, break, all those things. These are all binary inputs. They're either a zero or a one. It's either being pressed or it's not being pressed. So even if you do bind with your controller setup, something such as a yaw or a pitch, it's not going to give you that granular control reading the sensitivity from the joystick. It's only reading if there's input. And if there's input, it sends it to the HUD and tells it that it's being pressed and it just goes down like a normal keyboard control would. So that's an important difference to keep in mind. Piloting is kind of the keyboard equivalent. You can custom bind it however you want to, but these are essentially keyboard bindings. So that is where the Lua tab comes in. And if we're gonna scroll down to the bottom, we're gonna come back to this Lua options at the top here a little bit later. But down at the bottom of this section, is the actual joystick axis configuration. This is what allows a custom HUD to read in that fine level of detail of input from a joystick, any axis that you can bind, which includes things like, you know, throttle, the actual stick itself, but other inputs that your HOTAS might have like rockers or dials, uh, it can actually feed in sensitivity from those as well. And we have up to 10 of these axes to work with. With that said, most of the HUD developers have gotten together and developed something of a consistent structure to how these axes should be bound. So I'll walk you through that right now with the caveat noting that if these bindings are backwards from how you expect them, uh, if, I sell, if I tell you to push forward or twist right, whatever it may be, uh, just try the opposite direction. <laughs> so if it doesn't work for your setup, uh, keep the same configuration, but just change the direction that you're doing it in if you need to reverse it. So first up, Lua Axis Zero, this is going to be your role. So however you wish your role to be translated, in my case, I prefer for my role to be a right push on the stick. So go ahead and click on that to create the input. And then I'm going to push to the right. You're going to see that these aren't going to update. I can go ahead and just delete these. 
actually really quick here, just so I can start from fresh. Uh, axis one is going to be your pitch. So I recommend pushing forward. There we go. Axis two is then your yaw. So again, whatever control you wish to use for your yaw, in my case, I'm going to twist to the right. Axis three is then your throttle. So I actually have a throttle stick on this HOTAS. So with that, I'm gonna push forward and then don't forget to reset so you don't accidentally take off. Lua axis four is a break. So in this case, I would say if you have a dial or something that you wanna do granular break control, this would be where you would bind that. The HOTAS that I have access to does not have any dials on it, unfortunately. It has one rocker, which I prefer for something else we're gonna to get to in a second here. Next up, axis number five, this is strafing. So left and right translation engines that your ship may have. Again, the, all, most of these next, next ones here are great examples of something that you could use with either rockers or with dials. Axis six is then vertical translation. So if you have up and down facing engines to help you move around in space, and this is actually what I prefer to put on the, the one rocker that this HOTAS has. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here and bind that. And then seven, eight, and nine tend to be custom decisions made by each individual HUD. Uh, with Albatross, the one that I develop, access number seven here is actually for your hover height. So if you have another dial that you can access, this would be a great place to put what you want your hover height to be. You can actually change it from essentially zero to 100%. Don't forget to hit save down here at the bottom to make sure these changes get saved to your profile. And that should give you the basics to get started with any of the custom HUDs that are out there. But I do wanna come back up here to the top with these Lua options. All the custom HUDs tend to use some sort of key binding option set, which is Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3, so on and so forth. Like you can see the keyboard bindings on the left here. If you're familiar with Albatross, Albatross uses these things for auto leveling, for keeping your current altitude, for disengaging autopilot, things like that. This is again, a great place to put some custom bindings, especially if you have a myriad of buttons on your HOTAS available. Then for example, I might wanna put the Albatross auto level, which is Alt 2. I might wanna put that on one of my joystick buttons. I'm gonna say this one. And in a very similar fashion, I recommend doing the same thing with piloting bindings. For example, you can actually already see down here that I have landing gears, the G button bound to my joystick six, which is in a position that I just find to be good for uh, engaging my landing mode. Uh, same thing with brake. I have a brake toggle set up in my Albatross version. So I bound that to a button on my throttle so I can engage the brake and disengage it when I need to. But you can do the same thing, any bindings for like stopping the engines, for docking and undocking, lights, boosters, all of that. This is where you would have that simple, you know, on or off input. So basically just buttons. So any buttons that you have on your joystick or HOTAS, that's what goes great here. All right, next up, let's talk about controllers. I've got an Xbox controller that I'm gonna be using for my demonstration. And for the most part, everything I said about HOTAS applies to the controllers as well. It's the same basic idea button presses for options and any axes you have, which are essentially your two, your two thumbsticks. So your left thumbstick, your right thumbstick. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I've done some playing around with the controller and trying to use it for flying. I've been using one joystick for pitch and roll and the other joystick for yaw. And then in the piloting section, what I've actually done with mine, do we want to come up here? In the speed section, this is where I chose, instead of using a throttle-like feature. I'm instead using my right trigger for speeding up and left trigger for slowing down. Uh, and then I can also bind brakes. I prefer to use one of the bumpers for that. Uh, and then I wanna kill the engines potentially with a different one. So I'll say left bumper kills the engines. And then I'll use different buttons for the features like landing gears, so like maybe A is to land, go down. And then I'll probably come back to here and do some other configurations. Like for example, if I wanna do auto level, I'll put auto level on Y. And perhaps something like hold altitude on the up directional. There's a lot of things you can bind with this and with the amount of 
uh, incredible customization that Arcud has. Uh, there's probably a lot of interesting things that you could do here if you're more familiar with how that HUD works. The other thing that the controller can do, however, is you can bind avatar settings. And actually, you'll see already I've got this set up. <laughs> so your avatar forward, back, left and right movements, as well as the avatar head camera for looking up, looking down, looking left, looking right. You can bind these to your sticks by pressing in the axes that you would expect for each one. So for example, for forward movement, I'm gonna say left stick and then push forward. And it does basically what you would expect. Same thing across all of these. And then for the camera, same thing for look up and look down, but on the right stick. And then you might put run, sprint, or jetpack on either your triggers or your buttons, whichever one you feel more comfortable with in order to move forward essentially. So you can completely control your avatar uh, just from the controller. One caveat here that I've noticed is that unfortunately, while you are flying a ship, the avatar key bindings for things that I would want, like camera, uh, do not function. So even if you're fly flying in first person view with avatar bindings set up on a controller, the game does not consider you to be in avatar mode. It considers you to be in piloting mode. So it ignores those key bindings. And that's about it. I hope you find this helpful. I'm going to put links in the description down below for where you can find all of the popular HUDs. Uh, in particular, I'll have Albatross and Archive linked down there and a link to the developer Discord community where other HUDs are available there. Probably most of those are going to be updated soon as well to support this new HOTAS update. And yeah, I'm most curious. Tell me down in the comments below, what's your favorite HUD? What do you like flying with? And do you have a HOTAS? Have you tried any of these custom HUDs out so far? And what's your experience been like? I've been having a lot of fun with it, especially in like fast little speeder ships. Uh, it's been a blast. It's not something I've typically done. I haven't really flown, flown in first person uh, since the alpha days, really. So it's been really nice to have a reason to kind of come back to first person view flying. And I've been enjoying it. So yeah, hope you found this helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Landing mode engaged.